find grace to help us even in this time of need. For if there ever was a time that we needed you, oh my God, the time is right now. We pray that you continue to have your way today. Move by your power and by your spirit. Let your presence be great in the room, even on today. Touch every heart, mind, and will in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we come here to praise and magnify and lift up your name. The devil is defeated and God is glorified. Ooh, God, you've been so good to your people. You brought us from such a mighty long way, God. And we love you today. We will bless your name forever and forever. Now, God, send your word today. Send it like a hammer. And bring rocks into peace in Jesus' name, I pray. Somebody give God a good old sanctified. Trying to, you know, catch you up. 
in something and doing something wrong. And it's kind of rare that uh, when they find you doing something right. But uh, this man's idea is to catch them doing something right. And then when you catch them doing something right, give them a one minute praise. Don't wait because it takes away the impact when you wait. Don't wait till later because then they done forgot what they did. Catch them right then and there. They're doing a good job. Pat them on the back. Tell them they're doing a good job. So right then and there. You know, sometimes this is actually more, more difficult than what you think. Uh, because uh, not in this church, but sometimes it's it's easier to offer criticism, uh -huh. even though it may be constructive. Mm. Mm. It's easier to offer criticism than it is to offer praise. We're, we're much better at one minute blaming than at one minute praising. Thank you, Lord. As the First Lady said, we wanted to challenge you this week. Don't complain. Just praise. Everybody in here got a reason to give God praise. just to give God praise, but, but we can praise somebody for doing something right. I want to thank you. First thing, I want to thank you. For, I, God, I want to thank you for being a wonderful wife. Yeah. Thank you for being faithful in church. If you do that, if, if you find, you know, listen, everybody Oh my, by the grace of God, got some good in them. Oh, I better say that again. Everybody got some good in them. You might have to find it. You might have to search for it. You think. You, you might have to dig down real deep, baby. But I want you to know everybody got some good in them. Sometimes we have to find. Might be a good cook, might be a good cleaner, uh, might be a good transportation driver, might be a good encourager, might be a good helper, might be good being faithful, but oftentimes we take so many things for granted. Boy, when you find some good, concentrate on that. Concentrate on the good. Find the good. It will help your marriage. Oh, come on here, somebody. It will change the way you relate to your children. It will encourage you to report and find out the best. But maybe they're just nice. Listen, saints, we sell nice and short. We sell nice and short. You ever been around, you ever been around a mean, cantankerous person? Always negative, can't find the good in anything? Well, if you haven't, you, you know what? You keep on living because when you find a nice, kind, decent person, for me, that goes a long way. If we can't be nothing else, we ought to be nice. But it needs to be intentional. Amen. It needs to be intent to do it. Yeah. I was reading in the book of Numbers, 10th chapter, mm -hmm. through the 13th chapters, and God had blessed the children of Israel, and he was bringing them out of the land of Egypt, and he brought them out with a strong hand. He, he delivered them with the, with the locusts and with the with darkness and with, with bugs and, and blood and, and, and all these things. And, and then when he let them out, he let them out uh, with the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire 
by night. So, so they couldn't get lost. So they knew exactly where they were going. And in the 10th chapter, the Bible says that the children of Israel began to complain. They began to complain. And so here they are. They've been in bondage for over 400 years. And God is leading them out with a strong hand. And the first thing they said is, Lord, we don't have nothing to eat. Wish we were back in Egypt so that we could eat what they had. Instead of thanking God for what they had, they was thanking uh, the Egyptians for the menu that they could eat from them. And God gave them quail. And he gave them, and he gave them manna. He gave them bread from heaven. And he gave them bread so much. And then they, they weren't satisfied with bread. They wanted some meat. So he provided them quail. And he told them, now that's all I want you to do. I want you to get enough for a day's work. Don't get too much. Don't eat too much. The greedy uh, Israelites ate so much till they came out of the nose. They ate so much. Just greedy. Just eating all the time. Instead of thanking God and praising God, they kept on complaining to God. So much so that God sent a fire to the land. And Moses had to pray to God and say, God, turn the fire off. You're going to kill everybody. Moses' sister, Miriam, and his brother Aaron got to complaining. You, you, you know what they complained about? They complained to Mo, about Moses' wife. They, was, they were mad because Moses married an Ethiopian. What you doing marrying her? What's wrong with her? What, what are you doing? You, 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 know, you hate Moses. And you know what God, I'm going to tell you saints, God hates complaining. Mary walked out of the tent and and she was struck with leprosy. Amen. And guess who had to pray for her deliverance? Uh -oh. Moses had to say, Lord, don't kill her. Take the leprosy away from her. She don't know what she's doing. Help her, Lord. And that's where we've got to be in a state where God can help us when we most need it. And Miriam was thankful. She didn't complain no more about that wife. Sometimes we need to give ourselves. Sometimes we need to talk to ourselves. Sometimes we don't just just don't answer now. Go on, talk to yourself. It's all right to talk, but don't answer now. Come on here, somebody. Sometimes we need to give ourselves a good old talking to David. Pray unto God, and he said, "Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is." within me. Then he said, bless the Lord and forget not all of his benefits. Did you know that we're not only saved and sanctified and baptized and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, but we got some benefits. Mm -hmm. we, we got some benefits that money cannot buy. We, we got benefits, baby, you can have all the money in the world. And be tore up in your mind. Don't know who you are. Don't know where you're going. Don't know what you're doing. Don't know what to do. You ain't got confusion. You got heartache. You got malice. You got strife. You got trouble in your family. Trouble in your neighborhood. Trouble in your job. You got all kind of confusion. But I tell you what. If you live for God. God can give you peace. That passes all.
I wonder how many of us can really give God a one minute praise for all of his blessings. If we could just take time out and give God a one minute praise for all of his blessings. See, we need that. See, because I want, I want you to know that if you don't praise God, it's almost an assurity you're going to complain. Oh, let me hear. If you don't, if you have, if you don't learn nothing else, if you don't praise God, you most assuredly will probably bless. You will probably complain. He said, now, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. I talk to myself. This is an old song. Some of y'all don't, don't know it probably because it's kind of not necessarily a churchy song. But I'm, but, and I know none of you know it. I know you don't. Talk to myself because I don't have nobody else to talk to. I can't think of the rhythm or the melody, but somebody know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, my friend Rick know it. Yeah, he ain't shaved either. Come on here, somebody. You know, sometimes we just need to be real up in church. Sometimes we need to act like, you know what, sometimes, you know, I ain't Okay, you know what? Sometimes in church, we just need to be so real that people will be comfortable coming to church. Sometimes we need to think before we think. See, because we got to forget. We don't forget his benefits. So in order for us for not to forget, we've got to Think about it. We got to ponder it down on the inside. And then we got to give him praise. We got to remember before we can rejoice. The Bible says, who forgives us of all our iniquities. He forgives us of all of our sins. David is reminding us that we were born in sin and shape. In iniquity, and when I really think about it, and when I think about where God brought me from, and I really, when I really think about where I could have been and how I could have ended up, I just got to remember to give God thanks. I'm not like most preachers. I have not been saved all of my life. I just have not shouted during church time and during. I don't dance to world the music. I don't win. A couple of worldly parties. I've done a little of this and I've done a little of that, but, but the big the biggest problem in the world today is sin. I said the biggest problem in the day in the world today is sin. And people don't want to call sin sin anymore. But I want you to know everything that's not like God is sin. But I thank God that God has an answer for the world today. He has an answer for the problem of sin. I, I saw the play this past Friday night, and it was a wonderful play. Thank you. Hey, what was your name? Was your name Eric? Jordan? Jordan. Jordan. Saw Brother Jordan and who's it, Eric? Brody. 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 And who? Brett. Brett. Brody. 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 Okay, Brody and Brett. That's good name. And they talked about the sin problem. And and it came out that that you you really, and I want you to know, and please keep this in the context, because I'm gonna break it down for you. You really can't sin enough for God not to forgive you. Listen, I got a scripture. Touch your neighbor, tell him he got a scripture. Where sin did abound. Where sin did abound. Where sin did abound. Grace did much more abound. God loves you so much that he sent his own begotten son to die for the sins of 
got enough power to give us, to forgive us of our past sins. Now y'all say stay with the pastor. He can forgive us from our past sins. He can forgive us and he will forgive us for our present sin. Oh, but I'm going to throw a new wrinkle in there. God has enough power. Somebody need to write this down. Write this down. God got enough power to forgive you of your future sin. God's eager to forgive you. God's ready to forgive you. God wants to forgive you. See, now here's the reason why I say he forgive you, forgive us for our future sin. See, because, see, all we know, all we know is the beginning. All we know is the beginning from the end. But I want you to know God knows the end. God knows the end from the beginning. So there's nothing you can do that God don't already know. Ooh, somebody shout the blood. Ooh, somebody shout the blood.
and if you're not saved and you would like to be saved, this is your time. This is your hour. This is your moment. That God said, come unto me all you have laden and are heavy laden. And he said, I'll give you rest. If you need rest from your weary soul, today is your time. If you're here, I want you to come right now in Jesus' name.